everyone, welcome to the Fall 2024 edition of Calling the Audible. My name is Manuel Arroy, and I'm joined today with my good friend and teammate, Jerome Ovington. Jerome, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm excited to get the, the season of CTA started. Um, for those who don't know us, we are uh, players in FPF. Uh, we've been involved with the league uh, for the past few years. Uh, we do commentary, Jerome did articles, and uh, we're really, really passionate about Flag, and we're uh, very happy to be uh, to be the voice of CTA this season. Um, so just to every, uh, every start of the show, just do a little reminder for everyone. Uh, the uniforms, make sure you have a number on your uniforms, because you won't get your game played. I know that the first few weeks were, uh, were uh, the first two weeks were a little bit uh, not as, uh, as uh, severe on that, but as the season goes on, very important to have your, your numbers in the back of your shirt. Also, shorts without pockets, and you can't wear no jewelry on the field. Um, as the season goes on, also, it's very important that uh, your players get five games played if they want to play uh, in the playoffs. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. You can't bring a player that has played under five games um, in the season in the playoffs. So make sure that your, uh, your guys are there for at least five games, guys or girls. And uh, also check your cap and uh, of your roster. Make sure you don't bust the cap. Uh, you can always check it on the website when you uh, when you do a roster a roster submit to, to make sure that you're uh, you're under the cap because that would be unfortunate because you could lose a game because you bust cap. And uh, last thing, this week and in the um, upcoming weeks, we're going to take the team pictures. So make sure that your old team shows up for for these games because. You're uh, maybe going to miss one or two guys uh, on the photo. Uh, it's always fun to have the, the whole team. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the, for, the, for the league announcements. But everyone, let's get right into it with this season. Jerome, we're going to start with Coed 2. And um, when I look at Coed 2, I, I'm, not quite sure of, uh, I'm not quite sure of knowing all the teams. But that, that, that's a team that sticks out to me. And it's uh, at least we try again. So a little bit of a, a, new, uh, a new name. That team, do you think they are the favorites this year in Coed 2 with uh, the return of, um, of this team with uh, Daryl Dorsley, Jimmy Lee Janvier, uh, Shelder Valerie, and all these guys uh, and the girls also on the team. Do you think that that team could be the favorite this year? Uh, yeah, there's definitely a chance. And, uh, you know, the, the biggest part of that team is obviously the progression of Daryl Dorsley who's been really, really good. Last season, you know, in winter, uh, 39 touchdowns, six picks. Very, very respectable. And now he's coming in, and Coed Tier 2 in fall is, you know, a bit weaker than it definitely was in uh, in winter. Uh, obviously, Jimmy Janvier, he's a guy with a lot of experience, both as a quarterback and uh, as a receiver. And he showed why he's going to be the, the main target this season. You know, five receptions, uh, 48 touchdowns, uh, uh, 48 touchdowns, no, 48 uh, yards and three touchdowns. Um, you know, obviously that's going to be the guy that Dorsey is going to be looking at. But also, I, I really like the involvement of uh, Caroline Narivière in the last game. Uh, five receptions, six targets, 52 yards, one touchdown. Uh, showing that uh, Dorsey is willing to uh, throw the ball to his female players. If that's what the defense is giving them, and it was a, it was a great performance all around for them. Uh, I think yes, in, in a way they're the they're in the favorites, but it's way too early to to call them champions yet. No, I agree with you. It's it's a bit early to maybe say that they're the number one team, but they have a solid squad, and uh, with uh, Daryl Dorsley at the at the at the helm of the squad, he's a, he's a quarterback that, like you said, improve. Uh, every year, so it's going to be very interested how uh, how this team uh, fares out. Uh, if I look at the the rest of the um, of the division, is there a team that sticks out other than the, at least we try again that you say okay that team could be dangerous, that team could make some moves. Uh, for my for myself, I like who's going to carry the boats. I think uh, they're they're improving also very much. And last year they they, they had a last season they had a good run in the playoffs. And I think they, they carry that in uh, this season and uh, uh, have a good success. What about you? Yeah, I, I like the pick of uh, who's going to carry the boats. Obviously, uh, we've uh, mocked Alexandre Silipski a little bit with his, uh, his QB play, but he has really improved. 
Um, it took a long time, but he's getting there, and especially the, the two-way threat with uh, both being a, def- a great defensive player, uh, a great runner of the football. Yep. And the only question is perhaps that roster just isn't as good as it was last season. Obviously, the, the co-ed tier two cap is lower, yep. uh, which means that teams cannot uh, you know, have these, uh, these players that have these high 80 ratings and stuff. So... There, there were some decisions made with that. We'll, we'll have to monitor how uh, how uh, Solipsky is able to to handle not having perhaps that star receiver that he's had in seasons past. Um, also, we have to look at Kamikaze as one of, of the teams to uh, to beat. Um, great, a lot of talent on that team. Gabriel Lemon is back uh, after losing in the finals. Uh, Alexis Ferrand hopefully is going to be back uh, and healthy yep. and uh, Jean-Sébastien Arnaud we saw a great progression from him last season um, which is very interesting also uh, Rachel Shea who I was really impressed with in the finals and Leonid Dossobar as well with uh, his big body play and they also added uh, great receiver Eve Charbonneau so this is definitely a team uh, to look out for uh, I definitely agree. Uh, it's it's a it's, it's a great pick you uh, you did right there with Kamikaze uh, coming off that tough final loss. But you know, a team coming out of a final loss is always very hungry. So I think that this year, if all the the players can stay healthy and uh, Gabriel gets some uh, uh, chemistry with his new weapons, uh, per, for example, F. Charbonneau, I think that team can really really be dangerous. And uh, I agree with you, um, Gabriel Lemon is getting better and better as a QB. Uh, and he was finding his receivers. He had a, an amazing run in the playoffs. Uh, unfortunately, he got hurt, and one of his best players got hurt also, but still made the finals, and I think that team, like you said, they're, they're going to be a team to beat, definitely in Coed 2. So uh, for Coed 2, uh, we're, we're going to wrap up with this. Guys, it's just the first, uh, first week, so there's a little bit less to talk about, but as the season progresses, we have more more topics, and... If you have anything, don't uh, don't uh, don't be afraid to reach to us. If you want us to talk about your game, talk about your performance, we're always uh, happy to get some feedback. So uh, yes, moving on right now, we're gonna go into co-ed tier one, and in this small division, Jerome, uh, we're gonna do a little uh, a little breakdown of every team. What do we think about them? Uh, what do you think uh, they they can finish at, and uh, see what see uh, go from there. So let's start with a, a team that we know the name, but is a little bit different, Kiss My End Zone, without Iggy, Ignacio Valdez Manzanado uh, at the Elmat QB. Uh, Jimmy Lee Janvier has taken uh, the role of quarterback and has done very well in his last few uh, last two games against Aigre Du, winning both of these games. What do you think about that team? Uh, yeah, I was really surprised to see that Jimmy Lee Janvier was uh, on, the, on the roster and quarterbacking this team. That's, you know, that name didn't come up in my mind when I thought of you know players that could be the replacement or the the next player to uh, to take over the Kiss My Hands on franchise after uh, after Iggy is left. Uh, but yes, once again, this team is going to be uh, extremely competitive. Uh, it's always going to be a team that you know they're going to find a way to make it into the top four, which is not going to be very hard considering there are only five teams uh, in this division. Uh, but yeah, the, the presence of a player of the caliber of Isaiah Allard in co-ed tier one, highest defensive rated uh, player in all of FPF, and great, great, great female talent with the Amélie Du Rocher, Gérardine Cabio Abante, Chantel Chippy Brown, uh, a bit of a newer name in Alexandra uh, Falcon Corp, but uh, promising there, Marie-Ève Girard and Erika Dubois, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of offensive and defensive female talent on this team. No, I totally agree there. They're going to be, uh, I think, in the top one or two uh, teams throughout the season. I think it's going to be tough to beat that team, like you said, with the, the addition of uh, Geraldine and Chantel. That's both girls I played with personally, and they're, they're ballers on the field. So I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that team, even though Iggy is gone. I think the franchise, uh, the Kiss My franchise, is going to stay strong, and uh, yeah, I think I think they're going to be good. But you got Fit Squad also who's moving up. We're not used to see them in a co- in a higher tier of co-ed. Normally they're always uh, always in the second tier, but now they're they're here, and I really like this Fit Squad team. Um, it's the same team every season, so you know the chemistry is there. 
you know that uh, the quarterback play is improving. William Brouard getting better and better uh, as a running QB and a passing QB. This team is just is just clicking. So I think they're gonna they're gonna click all all year and uh, I gonna have some big big um, uh, performances from Tamara Boulanger defensively and uh, Salim Taye also a player that uh, you play with and we know what he can do on the field. Very very good defender. Uh, but this whole team is. Uh, it's you know they're, they're you know they're going to bring it and you know they're going to play good. They have a good system in place, and uh, I think that they're uh, they're going to be very very uh, very good this season. Also, we have a newer uh, newer name in the in the division, Gros Gugut. Not uh, quite sure uh, uh, that team, but I think it's a uh, it's the Bal Profond uh, squad with a new name. They like to, to switch up the name. I, I like the name. What do you think about this team uh, with uh, François Rochelot, uh, Eve Charbonneau, uh, Bruno Provencher, and, and all these uh, these players? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Also, that another team uh, is named Balls Deep in this division, and it's not them. Uh, guys, show a bit of creativity, please. <laughs> um, this this name is overdone. It's been done in French. It's been done in Spanish, English, everything. Find something else, please. <laughs> um, yeah, as for uh, Kroos Gugut, who I respect for changing their name, uh, there's a lot of cap being spent on François Rochelot uh, yep. with that almost 95 overall on offense, which means is they can't spend as much on the, the rest of the squad, but he is a player that's extremely dominant. He's perhaps the, the best player in, uh, in Coed 1 yep. offensively. The question is, can Bruno Provenci get him the ball deep? Can can he throw that ball and let uh, Rochelot get it, or is this just going to be like uh, dunk it short and then he breaks some tackles, which is a lot of uh, which is something we see a lot in uh, in coed. Um, but then again, like we talk about uh, female players and the the three v three format, uh, three men three women format that was introduced, yeah, has really helped uh, women find a bit of more of a maybe not the dominant number one receiver role, but settled themselves as uh, uh, wide receiver twos. Yeah. And also with the lower cap in fall, this means that, um, that the good, the, the, the very talented female players are going to be taking a step forward. And that's exactly what I see in Eve Charbonneau. I think this is going to be a, a very big season for her. Um, and um, there are other female also, uh, female players also who could have a big impact. I think uh, she's the player to watch uh, on that team. Uh, definitely, I agree with you. Uh, I think that Gros Gugut have a, have a solid roster. It's just like you said, can the QB get the ball to Francois deep? Or can he get some, some schemes that help him? Because uh, teams are going to focus on Francois. They know who he is. Uh, just went back from the, from the World Championship in flag. We saw what he did there. Uh, an absolute stud. So teams are going to focus in. That's going to open up a lot of th- uh, a lot of holes in the different um, the, the defense with all the other players. So I think that, like you said, Eve Charbonneau can take a step there, and all the other uh, players in, in that team. Uh, moving on to balls deep, we have um, this team that I'm not quite sure. Okay, so I see uh, balls deep is a team that normally also played a, in a lower uh, lower coed tier, but. The, they uh, they registered in in coed tier one. Um, I see this this squad having a little bit of trouble just adjusting with the uh, the, the other teams. Like we mentioned, the Kiss My End Zone and uh, Fit Squad are teams that are really really um, they're they're really experienced. So this team a little bit less ex- less experienced, but it's going to be interesting what they can what they can do. I think they can steal some games, but it's not going to be an easy season uh, in my opinion right now. But Benjamin, I think Benjamin Carly will be the quarterback, and uh, I saw him play uh, the All Star game a few seasons ago. Very, very, very promising what I see. Uh, I think uh, he just needs that those uh, those reps uh, playing against uh, higher divisions defense, and uh, I think they'll, they'll they'll be fine, but maybe not in the, in the top uh, top teams. Yeah, and Benjamin Carly, you know, it's only his third season as yeah. quarterback. He's played 19 games. It's not the end of the world if he struggles. No. Um, he's very athletic. He's able to move the ball with his feet. Something that I like the QBs do that, but not at the expense of um, the passing game. He threw 37 passes in week one. Yeah. Only completed 19. 
Um, he's a QB that throws a lot, a lot of passes. Um, perhaps doesn't have the, the strongest confidence in his deep ball. He likes to, to move the field, but he's got to work on his accuracy, his consistency uh, throwing the ball. And obviously, it's going to be an adjustment. Defenses are so much better as you move up the divisions. He was very, very solid in the winter 2024 with 46 touchdowns, eight, uh, eight interceptions only. Yep. But this might be a struggle early on. Like I, I expect him to to default to the running game as he did in week one um, a lot if he's not able to find what's open. Uh, but as he gets more reps, he's going to get more comfortable throughout the season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I agree with you. It's, it's not the end of the world if they don't win all their games because the expectations are not as high. But it's a, it's a good challenge that Balls Deep uh, chose to, to come into the co-ed tier one. I think they're, they're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be challenging, but that's how you improve. We both know that. And to, to wrap up uh, co-ed, co-ed one, we have Aigre Du, uh, and also a team that um, it's a mashup of different players. Uh, not a team that's returning, but I see that you have uh, Tam, uh, Tam Villadet at, uh, at QB. So that's uh, always something to, to watch out. We know how Tam plays, very electric offense, and uh, he gets uh, his, his players very very involved in the games. They also got uh, Emile Chateauvert on the squad, um, different players, Sarah Maud Leblanc, a uh, new player to the league, Julien Prou, uh, I'm naming, uh, and Ariane Brenko. So different different players, I think, that play CJEP or University Ball. So very very uh, very promising for, for this team. They lost their first game to, uh, to Kiss My End Zone. Um, for for a new team, newer team, it's, I think it's normal. Uh, even though Kiss My End Zone got a new QB, I think that they're uh, they're they still got the squad that is in sync. So it's, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting season for uh, for Aigre Du. Uh, in this in this small division, you're gonna see the teams a lot. So you're gonna see maybe a team three times or at least two times. So. You're gonna have those matchups. You're gonna have uh, the ability to to go back and to, um, to to get your revenge. So that's that's maybe what's gonna happen with Egredu, who's gonna face off against uh, Kiss My End Zone later in the, in the month of October. Yeah, I mean, Tom's a very talented quarterback. He's had his struggles in the last few seasons. Um, perhaps the lack of uh, of playing and other things going on as. Um, has made him a bit less locked in when it comes to, to, to playing that quarterback positions, which is a position you have to be absolutely like mentally ready every time you step on the yep. field. Um, he's done good, solid, you know, eight touchdowns, one interceptions in two games. It's it's not bad. Um, just hasn't been able to uh, to overthrow that, that Kiss Man end zone team, which we know is going to be one of the, the, the favorites. And they were competitive in that in those games, both of these games. Uh, so no, I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't be hitting the panic button just yet. Um, you know, Emil Chautovar, Julien Prou, two very very talented receivers. Perhaps lacking a bit of that height, uh, especially against a team like Kiss My Hands, who has Isaiah Larden. We saw it like Isaiah popped off in those games. Mm. But their defense, uh, their their female players, once again very talented. Ariane Brinco, you mentioned Sarah Maud Leblanc. This is going to be interesting. It just might take a while before they're truly settled in. Maybe perhaps some easier games to uh, to ease into the season. There you go. And it's a long season. Only five teams in the division. So not quite sure what's the, the playoffs uh, situation there. Uh, we're going to confirm this as the season goes on. But take the season to improve. Take the season to have fun. And uh, you're, they're going to win some games. I'm, 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 I'm confident in that. 100%. So uh, wrap, wrapping up with Coed One, uh, Jérôme, uh, allons-y uh, en français maintenant pour continuer avec uh, la division Women's. Um, division Women's avec uh, neuf, uh, neuf équipes. Donc cette année, on, aura, on a seulement une division uh, pour les filles, mais on voit des, uh, des équipes là, qui, uh, qui reviennent, uh, notamment uh, Sub-Zero, qu'on connaît très bien. Euh, des équipes de, de, aussi de, de, qui étaient en division un peu plus basse, comme Wolfpack, euh, qui, est, qui est de retour. Euh, les Louvres du Nord aussi, une nouvelle équipe, je crois, pour cette année, qui ont déjà joué, mais euh, nouvelle dans cette saison. Donc, ça va vraiment être intéressant, hein, la, division, la division féminine. Euh, selon toi, si on met à part Sub-Zero, qui tu vois être l'équipe qui peut les challenger, l'équipe qui peut leur donner 
un challenge à, à l'équipe euh, l'équipe Canada quand on y pense là, Sub Zero euh, c'est ça ouais ben Sub Zero avec euh, avec tout le, le talent qui est dans cette équipe là je pense pas vraiment que c'est une question euh, qui va euh, va vraiment être les, les favoris au travail de la saison euh, je pense honnêtement que on peut on peut regarder euh, une équipe comme Mercenaries qui est un petit peu... Euh... Oh. Ouais. Ouais, qui est une équipe qui a, qui a gagné à la semaine 1. Excuse-moi, euh, mon, mon ordi lag. Je peux pas... Il euh... n'y a pas de problème, mais écoute, euh, dans le fond, tu parlais de Mercenaries, mmh. puis euh, je vois que c'est avec... Euh, je, je pense que Maya Difazio est, 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 est comme carrière. Donc, euh, c'est une, euh, une équipe qui, euh, qui va être intéressante de voir comment elle, comment elle, va, elle va faire durant la saison. Je vois qu'elle a ajouté Kayla Jones là, de, de IG Team, donc euh, des, euh, des joueuses là, qui, ont, qui ont beaucoup de potentiel. Là. Puis euh, F.A. Petron aussi, là, euh, une très très bonne joueuse là, qui joue euh, au cégep. Là. Euh, donc, je pense que cette équipe-là va avoir… Euh, va, va, ça va être bon cette saison. Ça reste à voir lorsqu'ils vont faire face avec Sub-Zero, euh, comment il, ça va être un, un assez gros challenge de ce côté-là. Euh, là, on a perdu Jérôme, donc euh, écoutez les amis, on va continuer euh, euh, avec euh, ça ici. Mais quand je regarde là, euh, la division de, de féminine, puis les joueuses euh, défensives, euh, c'est quelque chose qu'on on aimerait vraiment garder. Là. On sait que Tamara Journeau de Sub-Zero, euh, probablement la meilleure joueuse défensive, euh, ils avons Sabrina Gervais aussi qui est excellente, euh, mais Géraldine Cabello Avante qui est une, une excellente joueuse défensive qui sait comment lire le jeu. Je crois qu'elle va avoir une très bonne saison. Déjà euh, en un match, deux passes défendues. Euh, donc, et il y a aussi le retour de Rachel Vallière là, dans l'équipe de, euh, de Red Nation. Euh, je crois bien que Rachel peut, euh, peut, peut avoir un impact là, dès, le, dès le début de, de la saison. Donc euh, euh, voilà. Euh, très intéressant qu'est-ce qui va se passer avec la division euh, féminine cette année euh, moi et Jérôme on aimerait beaucoup ça avoir euh, des, des joueuses de la division féminine qui pourraient euh, venir joindre euh, euh, le podcast pour nous parler en fait euh, de, de qu'est-ce qui se passe dans la division c'est sûr que pour nous on est moins, euh, on est moins au courant vu qu'on ne voit pas nécessairement les matchs mais si euh, une fille, euh, une coach quelqu'un qui, euh, qui veut rejoindre le podcast pour euh, nous parler de tout ça on serait vraiment, euh, sera vraiment content de vous avoir là, parmi nous. Donc, euh, faites-nous signe là, dès, que, dès que vous pouvez. Euh, puis, euh, on pourra s'arranger un, une interview là, sur le podcast euh, de Calling the Audible. Donc, maintenant, je vais passer à la division 55 euh, chez les hommes. La nouvelle division récréative de, qui vient juste d'être introduite la dernière, dernière saison, on a... On a commencé euh, le 5 contre 5 en spring euh, et euh, il y avait seulement une division qui était la division euh, compétitive. Mais euh, vu qu'on avait plus d'inscriptions cette année, on a pu euh, avoir une division euh, récréative, donc la deuxième, euh, la deuxième division. Euh, donc le cap est plus bas, bien sûr. Et on va voir des différentes équipes. Là, donc je suis très, très euh, intéressé là, de, des différentes équipes qui se sont inscrites euh, dans, euh, dans la division 5 contre 5 euh, récréative. On a... Euh, on a Trailer Park Boys, Blue Ballers, Five Guys, Ambush, Dragon Magic, Drawing Dead et Blue Dry 7.1. Donc euh, vraiment des équipes là, qui, qui proviennent de différentes divisions. Là. Euh, Dragon Magic, je crois que c'est une équipe euh, de division peut-être D, division 5. Euh, on a Blue Dry, une équipe de, de tier C. Euh, Blue Ballers qui contient des joueurs euh, euh, de, de haut calibre. Là. Je vois là, quand je regarde le roster, je vois... Um, AJ Gomes and, uh, et uh, Joey Notaro, Marvin Steinberg, uh, une équipe uh, un peu uh, qui, uh, qui va être intéressante cette année là, uh, uh, définitivement là, avec, uh, avec uh, AJ Gomes uh, comme carrière. Donc uh, je crois que Jérôme, tu es de retour. Oui, désolé. Non, il Internet. Pas de Donc uh, c'est ça, j'avais un wrap-up avec uh, la division féminine. Euh, et je m'étais lancé dans la division 5 contre 5 euh, récréative. Puis euh, c'est ça, là, donc je commençais à parler là, des différentes équipes. Puis euh, j'étais sur le, le sujet là, de, de Blue Ballers. Euh, une, 
une équipe euh, qui est un peu euh, qui est un peu spéciale là, quand on regarde ça. C'est des noms de, de joueurs qu'on verrait pas nécessairement euh, en division euh, un peu plus basse, mais euh, AJ Gomes s'est fait, un, s'est fait une équipe là, en tant que carrière, donc c'est toujours intéressant à voir là, euh, qu'est-ce qui va se passer de ce côté-là. Mais si on regarde le roster, là, euh, c'est assez fort. Là, si je regarde ça, des noms comme Bekim Borova, euh, Jimmy Maneris, euh, Joey Notaro, euh, euh, Marvin Steinberg, je pourrais continuer là, là, au travers de la liste. Là, donc ça, je pense que ça va être l'équipe à battre définitivement euh, en 5 contre 5 récréatif. Euh, toi, t'en penses quoi? Je pense que c'est peut-être pas une équipe qui devrait avoir eu le droit de s'inscrire dans cette division-là. Euh, même si, euh, si AJ, c'est peut-être pas euh, sa position naturelle euh, être un corps arrière, c'est quand même un excellent, un excellent joueur avec énormément de, d'expérience quand même à la position. Après ça, tu, tu rajoutes des joueurs comme, euh, comme Bekim Borova qui ont un, un rating qui est plus bas, mais qu'on, on sait très bien que c'est un, un joueur qui a énormément de talent et qui est oui. capable de dominer et être un receveur numéro 1 et de jouer dans des hautes divisions. On ne va même pas mentionner Marvin Steinberg, évidemment. Mm. Il a sa, sa réputation dans la ligue. Joey Notaro, qui. C'est quoi C'est le receveur numéro 3, 4 C'est. C'est, c'est un peu ridicule. Puis. Et... Ben, le, fait que... le fait que AJ soit carrière, c'est sûr que ça libère beaucoup de cap. Là, puis je crois qu'il aurait été capable de se faufiler là, dans cette division-là. C'est intéressant, c'est sûr que pour les autres équipes, c'est un, c'est un bon challenge. Là. Donc, tu vas, euh, ils vont jouer contre des joueurs là, qui, qui jouent dans les divisions euh, plus élevées. Euh, mais moi, je pense que oui, euh, si on regarde le roster, c'est un peu fort. Mais AJ Gomes, est, en, en tant que carrière, il n'a pas eu le plus gros succès dans les dernières années. Donc, c'est à ce moment-là, il ne peut pas courir en 5 contre 5, il y a des règles différentes. C'est sûr que. Il connaît le jeu, c'est un excellent joueur, probablement le meilleur joueur de la ligue. Mais quand même, on sait comment carrière, c'est difficile. Et je pense que ça va être là leur, euh, qui va avoir un peu plus de, de difficultés. Ça va être au niveau du carrière, mais ça reste à voir. Là. Euh, il y a d'autres équipes, là, j'aimerais bien parler de Dragon Magic, une équipe qui, 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 a, fait le, qui a fait le tournoi euh, de 5 contre 5 là, avec Guillaume Boulanger comme carrière. J'ai là, je, lorsque, lors du tournoi, là, j'ai vraiment, vraiment beaucoup aimé euh, cette équipe-là, comment, comment ils ont joué. Puis je pense qu'ils, euh, même s'ils ont perdu leur premier match, je pense qu'ils peuvent avoir une bonne saison. Puis je pense que ça peut être de, de la bonne expérience pour cette équipe-là, là, qui est habituée de jouer dans les divisions un peu plus basses. Là. Je pense que Guillaume Boulanger euh, s'améliore tout, constamment. Donc il va avoir une, une bonne saison. Là. J'ai, j'aime beaucoup cette équipe-là. Puis euh, on va garder un œil sur eux définitivement. Là. Ouais, mais ben, en même temps. Euh... Et Guillaume, il n'a pas tant joué euh, récemment. Sa, sa dernière saison, c'était Fall Cup euh, l'année passée. Euh, dans ce cas-là, j'ai toujours un petit peu de réticence euh, par rapport à, à la performance d'un joueur quand ça fait quasiment un an que, que tu n'as pas joué. Il n'a pas été extrêmement dominant non plus dans les divisions plus basses. Je pense que peut-être que des fois, un, un break de jouer pendant une coupe, une coupe de saison, ça peut te faire du bien, puis tu reviens, puis tu es plus en confiance, puis surtout quand fois, les, les carrières, c'est un, un jeu qui est très, très mental. Euh, mais je pense pas qu'il a montré assez encore dans sa carrière FPF euh, pour nous faire croire qu'il est capable de, de lead une équipe euh, en 5v5 récréatif pour un championnat. Écoute, ça, ça, le, on sait que le, le match, le, la game de 5v5 est différente. T'sais, c'est une game qui est quand même assez rapide. Là, donc, euh, on, on va voir qu'il y a de la différence là, à ce niveau-là. Puis, euh, Dragon Magic, là, je, peut-être qu'ils ne vont pas avoir la saison la, d'un record euh, en haut de, de 500, mais je pense qu'ils peuvent quand même euh, euh, donner des bons challenges aux différentes équipes. Là, puis, euh, si on regarde, là, y a, y a Blue, oui, il y a Blue Ballers qui ont, qui ont l'air très dominants, mais pour les autres équipes, là, je pense que ça va être assez balancé. Là, euh, si on regarde ça, c'est sûr, je ne connais pas tout, tout, toutes les équipes. Si je regarde Drawing Dead, par exemple, là, c'est une équipe que je n'étais que j'étais pas vraiment, euh, que je connais pas beaucoup. Euh, puis, je regarde les joueurs. Euh, je crois que c'est une nouvelle équipe, là. c'est constitué de, de différents joueurs qui ont, qui ont des ratings de base. Donc euh, vraiment intéressant, là. je trouve ça bien les équipes qui s'inscrivent euh, en 5 contre 5, là. c'est le, le, dans le, fond, le, le, le flag qui est comme un peu plus international, donc c'est bien là, qu'on, que la Ligue s'en va vers là. Euh, puis euh, très, très excité de voir ce qui va se passer dans la première saison de 5 contre 5 récréatif. Euh, donc voilà. Et maintenant, euh, let's, uh, let's segue into the 5v5 competitive so the other division that was introduced last season um and let's uh, let's get right into it uh, jerome 
we're going to do a little breakdowns of the team. Not many teams this season. Uh, five teams. Teams that we know. Uh, we know very well. Let's start with Kangaroos. What do you think of that team? I think it's interesting. Um, you know, they've played two games so far. They've won both, but perhaps against the, the weakest of the teams. Um, but to me, it's the impressive difference in how each receiver on this team plays. You have a lot of different players who can do different things. And you have an extremely ta talented quarterback and then Lazaro can throw any ball. Yep. You have that that big, like dominant number one receiver, great rounding AJ. But then you have Felix Boutet, who I wasn't sure was actually on the roster, but it seems he will be, who was, you know, he's the deep threat. With the arm of Dan Lazaro and the speed of Felix Boutet, he can just chuck it as deep as he can. Yeah. And he, the fact that he's performed so well so far, you know, six catches, 136 yards, four touchdowns. You know, you know how Dan Lazaro is going to use Felix Boutet. And they perhaps haven't even had enough time to find that connection so far. So this is definitely something we need to watch out. A bit like Francois Rochelot uh, last season for a flag mount sack. A thousand yards, 20 touchdowns. This could be Felix Boutet in 5v5 competitive, in my opinion, with his speed, which is king. And then add another very speedy and shifty guy who's going to break a lot of tackles, and that's Gene Zelexi, with the... Um, the vertical stretching of the field with both AJ Gomes and Felix Boutet. Look for Gene Zelexi to eat. I'm not sure if he's going to be the snapper in this situation, but that is something I would be uh, very interested in seeing. And then again, after that, uh, Serge Pinot Junior, Quizy Gordon Mall, nothing really needs to be said about these players. They are um, some of the best in the league. This team is very, very good. No, definitely. I, I can see them be uh, being at the top with the, with the Braves when, you, when we look at this and uh, the Braves, we know what they bring to the table. Uh, it's an amazing team. It's uh, pretty much the same guys returning. Uh, Gabriel, Charles Darby, Champagne uh, joining the team full time now. Uh, but I look at this Emile Chateauvert, Georges Gariepi, Guillaume Bellin, James Drysdale. I mean, this team is going to be good. This team is going to do what the, what the Braves do. Um, very, very cool to, to see them uh, always in the in the league so they they started the season with a boom <laughs> winning a 28-0 to uh, against mangoes and uh playing actually uh, tonight uh thursday against uh, the jamesons so uh the team that knocked them out uh, of the playoffs last oh, yesterday uh, last... yes exactly yesterday for those watching for those watching uh, hopefully you'll have one uh I exactly but uh but yeah we'll, we'll see about that the, uh, the braves uh we know what they do so yeah um, yeah. Obviously, um, if I'm Jeff Rosenblatt yesterday, don't throw near Gab, uh, Gab Champagne. Just don't. No. Please don't. Um, in week one, Mangoose, you know, they, they haven't played the 5v5 format yet. Um, Nick Schaefer looked like the, the worst quarterback in the league. And, you know, he, there's a question there with... Um, with the difference between the 5v5 format and the 6v6 format, where I don't put too much weight into this one game for Mangoose. I think there, it's more to say about, uh, there's more to say about the defense of Braves in that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's segue into uh, into uh, Mangoose. I'm sorry, I, I have to talk about this game. No, go ahead. Um, yeah, for, for Nick Schaefer, it's, it's going to be an adjustment, but... As we saw with Flagman Sack, um, they struggled as well last season to start. Yep. It wasn't uh, get shut down bad, but they ended up winning uh, winning the, the division. And um, Schaefer was without uh, his best receivers, uh, in my opinion. I'm not sure who um, will show up, who is actually on the squad, but no Vincent, uh, no Thomas Coutu, no Vincent Antil, no Tristan Fiscazo. I don't put too much weight into that uh, that game for Mangoose. I think um, the arm strength of Nick Schaefer and the talent at receiver for this team, I'm not. I wouldn't be worried too much about uh, about their offense. What about? No, you? I agree, and you made a great point there. Uh, both of the teams that were in the finals last uh, last uh, last season didn't start the didn't have the best start of the season, but they 
they kind of learned that 5v5 game as they went on and going against the Braves uh, in your first game is brutal <laughs> so uh, I, agree, I agree with you let's not put uh, too much weight on that uh, we got also Poseidon's kiss with uh, Rocco Cristiano at quarterback um, unfortunately losing their two first games against uh, Kangaroos um, we talked about Kangaroos how, how that team is uh, is uh, very very impressive but we have a plethora of talent in in uh, in the Poseidon's kiss team The question is, can they mesh together? Can they play um, as a team? Because individually, these are all studs. But are you able to put that in a game plan and to beat those teams that we talked about? Those Jamesons, those Braves, those Kangaroos that are mm -hmm. that have very good game plan and a lot of experience too at, in the 5v5 games. Uh, in the 5v5 game, especially uh, Kangaroos. Dan Lazaro only played in FPF once, like a couple games in the with the Wyoming Minar, but he has played he had played tournaments and same things for Braves. They're always in the tournament, so you know they're they're going to be sharp. They're going to be uh, they're going to be tough to beat. So not quite sure with uh, Poseidon's kiss. Hopefully they can they can bounce back in their next game against Mangoose, which should be a very very good matchup. Yeah, and, I think, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say one thing about Poseidon's kiss. The first game was rough. The second game was much better. Rocco Cristiano found the groove and threw six touchdowns and zero interceptions. Their defense is going to struggle because none of these players have ever played 5v5. Like, literally yep. none. The fact that they only lost by 10 to Kangaroos in week two is very promising. And I think this team will climb back up the, the rankings as the season goes on. Perhaps it's not going to be a, a serious contending team this season, but in, few, uh, in, seasons, uh, in future seasons, it's definitely a team to watch out for. I, th I think that Owen uh, Brujarski is going to have a very, very good season. That's a player that is not talked about a lot, but defensively is very good. And he put up really amazing numbers, seven uh, receptions, uh, 68 yards, one, one touchdown. So moving the ball uh, definitely in, the, in that uh, second game against Kangaroos. And uh, to wrap up the uh, competitive 5v5, we have the Jamesons. Uh, the um, Jamesons are returning with pretty much the same squad, maybe ad having a... A couple additions, uh, notably uh, Paul Lapierre, who's joining the team. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Paul can do uh, with Jeff Rosenblatt. Uh, we know that Paul is a very big target. He's tough to, uh, to guard. So I think that connection with him and Jeff is going to be very, very good. What do you think about it? Uh, yeah, I think um, Jeff has struggled sometimes with perhaps finding some rhythm in games or when there's nothing um, open immediately. He's He tends to make those uh, those silly mistakes that he um, that he doesn't like making, but Paul is kind of like a, a buffer for that. Yeah, it's like just with his ability to just go and get the ball over everybody. Um, great catch radius, some of the most secure hands in the league. Yeah, I think this is going to be just a great safety blanket to, for Jeff Rosenblatt, and I think Jeff is really going to. Uh, to use Paul Lapierre really as a, a ball mover, as somebody who, if I have nothing, I go to Paul, and he's gonna he's gonna eat the season. He's not gonna get those uh, those deep passes, those huge amount of yards, but expect a lot of targets in the red zone, expect a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, I totally agree, and uh, I'm happy to have him on my team. So uh, it's gonna be a fun season with uh, with these guys. So all right, Jerome, uh, we are done with competitive 5v5. Let's move on to the men's tier, and we'll go from four to one. Let's start with tier one, Jerome. Tier one is loaded with teams this season. Very cool to tier see. One. Uh, tier one. Uh, tier four. You uh, mean tier four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tier one is a little bit less teams, but yeah, tier four is loaded with teams uh, this less. season. And um, it's going to be very interesting what, what happens there. A uh, lot of teams, a couple teams returning. A lot of, lot of new teams, uh, a lot of teams that I've, I'm not quite sure who they are, but uh, throughout the season, we're going to learn about the, the different teams. We're going to see games. Uh, so like I said, with the, with the women's division, guys, uh, you can contact us. You can, if you can reach to us on Facebook. If you see us at the field, come talk to us about your game. We want to learn. We wanna, we're not going to be able to see all the games. And sometimes the stat sheet does not reflect uh, necessarily what happened on the game. So. Come see us. Come talk flag. We love it. We can talk about it for hours. So 
Uh, but yeah, if, if we look at the returning teams, uh, I see Bullseye is there, Black Shinobi. Uh, those are teams that had really good success last uh, last season. Uh, we got Les Studs also. Uh, I think that's the team that was in the finals in the, uh, uh, Division D with uh, Philippe Gelina. Uh, going back into tier four, I seen him having a great year. Is there anything that sticks out to you in tier four in this uh, big tier four? Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, Bolshai. Yeah, who uh, I think were uh, one of the best uh, teams in Division E last season. Um, you know, uh, quarterback Matisse Sardinia had a very very solid season um, and had a great performance to start. You know. We can't yeah. really compare those uh, those statistics between you know uh, tier four and higher uh, divisions because these guys haven't been able to uh, perhaps find what they like more about the game, like how to play, how to understand the concepts. But um, for a quarterback to throw six intercept uh, six touchdowns and no interceptions in their first game, um, to me that's something really positive. The low amount of yards, of course. But I'm not concerned. Um, they have a Bullshire also has a great defense, which means that you know they're going to get. Uh, Matisse Sardina is going to get short fields, and he's also going to be able to play with confidence, knowing that his um, that his team can get uh, the ball back if if anything else fails. What about you? Yeah, uh, like I said, I, I mentioned uh, Les Studs coming back from uh, from a final uh, final appearance in Division D. So I think that team is going to be very, very good this season. But if I come back to the to the list, uh, just to be sure. So it's a lot of teams in tier four. So guys, it's we're going to we're going to try to talk about everyone, but it's going to be one person. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we're yeah, about one person. We need to talk about it. What do you mean? I s- Rob Campana. Oh, man. We have to talk about it. Yes, um, I agree. I agree. We have to. We're, we're going to, uh, as, as for Tier 4, we're going to get more comfortable and more known uh, with the teams. It's hard to, to look at these teams just from one game against perhaps a team that's new or we don't know. There's a lot of moving parts in these lower divisions, and it's going to take time for us to, uh, to really understand like the the dynamics and narratives in this division but i want to talk about rob campan yeah no, uh, he, Ro- i saw the game he was terrible <laughs> i think his first pass was a pick he had one less pick than completions six completions five interceptions are we taking he uh he made the wrong move coming back uh playing and going quarterback what are we what are we thinking no, no, I, I'm not. I don't agree with you. Uh, you know, we we love you, Rob, but it's tough being QB, and he knows it. But you got to start somewhere. You know, uh, you know how it is with the quarterback, and tier four is perfect to to start get 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 yourself in rhythm. But you know how it was uh, that morning, that Sunday morning in Loyola it was a little bit chilly. So I can give Rob Windy. a little bit of a, yeah, exactly. There I can give him rain. a. <laughs> it was I'll tough, give him man. a. I'll give him a pass uh, on that one, but. Uh, very, very, uh, very cool to see the the former uh, former president of the league back uh, back in action, but uh, as a player now, so uh, very, very cool. Um, so yeah, uh, as the season moves on, guys, we're going to talk more about the different teams. For now, we got a little bit of uh, of unknown, but uh, very, very interested in that in that big, big uh, tier four uh, division with thirty four teams uh, in the division. Very, very cool to see. So let's uh, let's move on to tier three now, Jerome. Uh, tier three uh, division that you play in with the West Island boys. Don't talk about uh, <laughs> Let's uh, yeah. Um, okay, so as receivers, the receivers in tier three. Yeah. Is there a receiver that stands out to you that you're like, okay, this guy, he's gonna probably win uh, receiver of the year, two way player. Um, it's very early to say in the in the season, but we can we we can see some some names that uh, that we know there. Yeah, I have uh, a couple names actually. Um, first of all, is Nicholas Vaughn, who yeah. I think is one of the most talented players in FPF. 
as a two-way player. And he's going to finally get the opportunity to be a wide receiver one, get the most amount of targets, and he performed extremely well in, uh, in week one, getting 96 yards and four touchdowns. I think this is a player we have to watch out for. There's also obviously Sam Anasopoulos, who has joined our team in, uh, in Tier 2. He's starting to play in the higher divisions. Uh, very talented. Then again, maybe maybe a question with the, the quarterback play there um, for Team Sexy. Another player I'd like to mention is Artis Mamitaj. Yes. Who is uh, a player that is kind of a, an athletic freak. Um, probably, what, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, very fast, but hasn't necessarily played uh, much flag. But this is also uh, a player I, I, I'm really interested in seeing his, uh, his progression because this guy on the field, he's, he's an animal. Like, yeah. he's, he's disgusting. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what he does. And also, another player uh, who I'm glad is back in the league is um, uh, Mr. Cooper Young. Yes. Who suffered an injury uh, a couple of seasons back, and um, I think it was probably something that was pretty severe as he's not played a, in a while. But um, bringing you back to when he was playing, uh, 70, 725 yards, 12 touchdowns in, uh, in spring 2023, 629 yards, 20 touchdowns in winter 2023. So definitely a player we have to look out for. Perhaps it's going to be uh, slow getting back a little bit, but it wasn't the case in week one. I think uh, I have a sleeper pick for you uh, as receiver of the year, uh, Edouard Guima from uh, from Team uh, Team Etnik. I think that's a player that's getting better and better. He's very very involved in flag. He loves it, and he's got pick, he's got picked up by many teams. Uh, and that's a very good player, a humble player. Uh, and uh, with with Team Etnik, I think he's gonna have an impact right away. Um, I think uh, Benoit Lawler is the no uh, David Deandrade is the quarterback if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it's Ben Lawler. Oh, Benoit Lawler is uh, is back at the at quarterback, so that's that's it is that's cool to see. I think Edouard Guima is gonna have a great year. Uh, he already started well with uh, two receptions and uh, two ca- two catches on on two uh, two targets, and uh, he had sure. two touchdowns. I like it. So Edouard is uh, is really talented. Very yes. Excited. Uh, he's played flag before, before joining the league. Uh, perhaps needs a bit of adjusting to uh, to FPF, but uh, yeah, this is a player. Both sides of the ball, we have to, to watch. Definitely, out definitely. And uh, you you brought a team that we you wanted us to talk about. Voodoo. Yes. Is it their year that they can finally be at the top of the division? You know what. Um, Frankie has had some struggles and, you know, I, I don't think he's ever won a, a championship before, which is, you know, a bit surprising considering how long he's played in the league, but um, he's brought a great, great, great roster to the uh, to Tier 3 this season. Um, Alexandre Charkiaoui, who we picked up from Baby Sharks, uh, very talented, very athletic, yes. great, uh, great anywhere on the field. Samuel Tavernier, who was on the previous edition of uh, Voodoo, is also a very athletic and a bit um, perhaps raw player. Jeff Brown, Martin Bergeron, and a great performance in week one from Cyril Jamal Belfort. Yes. Two sacks. He, he was really good. And, you know, he's, he's had his, uh, his struggles in, in, in seasons past. You know, he perhaps was a bit frustrated at times with his inability to, to get to quarterbacks, but um, that's a guy who's really determined, uh, who really wants to make an impact in FPF. And, you know, I, I'm really glad to see him uh, getting two stacks in, in, um, in week one. Man, he's starting the season strong, uh, aiming maybe for 20 sacks in the year if he keeps it up that way. Who knows? But definitely, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I agree with you. Uh, CJ is uh, he's getting better and better. and. The rusher position is not an easy position. We both know it. It's very hard, and he's making some great strides, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy to see it. They're gonna have a good game next week against uh, Snowden Delhi the Gents. That's a team that was really, really good last season. So Voodoo, for me, I'm not quite sure, but I'm hopeful. Sure, I'll take that. So uh, all right, Jerome, let's uh, let's move on to tier two. Um, and 
Tier 2 is a, a division a little bit smaller, of course, than, than, the, uh, than the other ones. But um, let's see, we got some, some returning teams, some teams that moved up if, if you want. Uh, let's go like this. Who do you see having an up year and who do you see having a down year from the teams? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, it has to be Beer Belly Brigade. Um, for those of you who uh, followed Division B a little bit um, last spring, it was a very tough season. Yeah. Uh, in, in which they, I don't believe they won uh, um, a single game unless it was a forfeit versus uh, that situation last season. Yeah. Um, but Alexandre Fafal and co. probably didn't want to be playing in Division uh, B last season, but they're going to get great experience from... Um, from, from playing those tough games that they ended up losing. And now with Tier 2 being a bit weaker than uh, Division B was in spring, yeah. I think we're looking at them as perhaps a 6-4, and 7-3 and three team uh, rather than a, a team that's uh, bottom-dwelling like it was last season. No, I definitely agree. And you can see that having Olivier Claveau on a team is very huge for, uh, for Alex Fafard, uh, just making an impact already with eight receptions, 80 yards, and three touchdowns. That's a player that's always, always going to have an impact on the game, either defensively or offensively. So that I agree with you. Beer, Beer Belly is going to have a is going to have an up year, um, and that's part uh, in part because Tier Two is a little bit weaker than uh, Division B. But still, uh, I think that they're going to improve just just because they they had that experience from last season. And they don't want to have two bad seasons. I know these guys; they're very competitive, and they're gonna they're gonna come out to play. Um, myself, I see Finns up having a very very good year. Also, uh, Will Power is returning from a Division B championship where where he he subbed mid season for uh, the infantry. And William Power is a quarterback that is is very very impressive. I think he's one of the best QBs in the division for sure, in my opinion. His, uh, his play style is very, very uh, reminiscent of uh, Steven Arapasad, but with a little bit of a different touch uh, of his personal touch. But he runs the concept so well. And man, if I look at the team, it's a uh, it's really, really, really good team. You know, you got James Langshaw, Joey Nataro, Dondre Borden, and they added Marcus Lynch on the squad. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's that's a big part there. Yeah. Um... And don't forget about Kareem Anthony Chilcott, who's a nope. very, very ta- very good rusher, man. Yes, um, he is. He's going to have those impactful games. Um, he might struggle a little bit against those rushing QBs, but having Joey Nataro on the on the squad exactly. in that case is perfect. I think the only question is, I don't think they're going to want to play the season with only six players, and it's a bit similar to that situation they had uh, in Division C last season, yep. where they couldn't... Um, they had, they had to play with five players because um, David Kowski got injured and that ended up, um, you know, with the cap situation and stuff, they're really tied to the cap. Yes, they are. I think. So one player or two could make them bust. So they, they are going to have to check week to week uh, for, for subs or perhaps they're still looking for that other player. Uh, but yes, Marcus Lynch, I think he's been very dominant in lower divisions. It's going to be interesting to see if he's ready to make that jump. We know the the talent is there. There's no question about that. Um, there's maybe more a bit of a question mark about the experience, uh, maybe the discipline uh, running the routes on, on the field, especially in a system of willpower which is very organized. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, can William Power get the ball deep to Marcus Lynch? That's also going to be a, an interesting thing to see. Um, but yeah. I don't think Marcus is gonna is gonna hurt the Finns up by being on their team at all. I think he's, uh, that team has a yeah. lot of speed, and with Dondre Borden, you have a you have good height also, and Will, William Power also defensively is a very very good player. Um, so yeah, I, as well. yeah, hey, uh, what, Langshaw, I was gonna talk about him in the tier one because oh, okay. I, I have I have oh, a okay, couple okay. things to say about James. He's sure, sure, uh, sure. very impressive. Uh, let's say that, but. Yeah. Is there a team that you think that is going to have a down year? For me personally, is the commission. It's going to be tough for the commission this season, man. Tier 2 is... It is, will. It may be too strong for them, but 
they can prove me wrong and that's what I hope they do. Yeah, well, S Stephen Casey perhaps isn't ready for uh, for tier t uh, for tier two now, but I wouldn't be calling it a down year if I didn't have that many uh, expectations. Yeah, I think we have to look at the infantry here. I and see. It's not that I'm saying they're gonna have a down year. It's just that a lot lies on the performance of Sean Sermerson at quarterback. Yes. The talent on the squad is crazy. Uh, Charlie Bachon, Ethan Adrian. Probably the best rusher in FPF at this point. Could we really argue that other than no. Isaiah Allard? Um, <laughs> I mean, Isaiah is the best, but it's it's they're two different types of rushers. Yeah, Martin yeah. Lapointe, once again, he's going to be a, a great target. He catches everything. He's, yes. He's always open. Nick Dimolo, very underrated player. Crazy Gordon Mall, we know who he is. Rory Sumergin, we know who he is. The only question mark is this. Son, Sean Sumergin at quarterback. Yeah, I agree. You 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 brought a great point because I was not sure who's gonna who was gonna be quarterback for that team. But when I look at their the players that they added, they can only work with so much cap at the the quarterback yeah. position. So yeah, that that Ross that defense of infantry is gonna be very 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 impressive because yeah. you got guys like Quazy, you got the best rusher in the, in the league. You got Nicolas Dimalo, who I think is personally one of the best defensive players in tier two uh in division b yo he, he was everywhere he was everywhere yeah. uh, smart very smart. Uh, he's so smart and he's he's like a little bit of a fred warner he's yeah, he's gonna okay. go for the tackles i like, I like he, that uh so i just thought about that but nick zamal is very good and also charlotte Olivier vachon an amazing yeah. player a uh, guy that's corner. yes exactly and he's keep on improving every every single season so Infantry, I agree with you. Maybe he's gonna have a down year because of the quarterback play, but Sean can surprise us. We haven't seen him play QB in, a, in the past few seasons, maybe once or twice. But it's gonna be interesting. I know, I know he can Not throw. He he's a tall, he's a tall, uh, tall guy. So that's an advantage there. But we know how is uh, how difficult it is to play quarterback. Yeah. Uh, especially in tier two, you're gonna go against some good, good defenses. So yeah, Jerome, uh, that's uh, that's it for uh, for tier two, and uh, let's wrap up the show with uh, the final the final tier tier one, um, who has seven seven teams uh, this season, uh, pretty much uh, all returning teams. Uh, we got that uh, that vengeance team who's back, very uh, very nice to oh, see yeah. uh, the goat back in uh, back in action, Kevin Wyatt uh, with his team. So um, like you said, but. In his first game, only throwing for 184 yards, only five TDs. But do you think, like, do you think it's the is the season that Joe Maher just is number one in, uh, mm. before him? Do you think it's is the year? I don't think we're done with that certain discussion. Uh, I think this might actually go until the the final game of the season. Yeah. If uh, if the, if if what we think will happen happens. Um, but yeah, Kevin Wyatt is back. Uh, that's great to see. And that creates now a, a bit more competition at the top in, the, in Tier 1. You know, the, the Braves' domination uh, was getting a bit boring, in my opinion. <laughs> so I, I'm, gr I'm glad that, uh, that Wyatt is back. Um, and he's, you know, he's picked up a pretty good roster to boot as well. Uh, James Tyrell, one of the, the most notable additions to the team. As well as uh, Quay Johnson, I think uh, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be really uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how Wyatt uh, uses these uh, these receivers. Sanders Armand also joining the team. That's interesting. Yeah, um, I think I think for Sanders it's going to be a uh, um, bit of a you know like get into get into rhythm. Find some chemistry with Wyatt. It might not happen right right away. Sanders is an interesting receiver in that he's not your typical uh, player play receiver. You know, he's played the defensive end all of his football yeah. career, and he's still improving. You know, you, you see that there's another level that Sanders could reach, and I think playing with a great quarterback like Wyatt could uh, could help him uh, get closer to to the level I think he can get to. He's not used to it, but he's gonna have to prove himself uh, for his roster yeah. spot. Yeah, he uh, will. Yeah, but 
<laughs> yeah, uh, very interesting that team. Uh, uh, I didn't notice that James Tyrell was on the squad uh, with Quay Johnson. Um, very, very cool to see. And you got the returning names, uh, Rory, Matt and, uh, and Marc-André, Matt Bond also uh, defensively. Yeah. So that's a very, very good team. Is there a team that can challenge Vengeance or Braves in that division, in your opinion? Oof, it's probably going to say no here. Um, just because of the clear gap between uh, Meyer, Wyeth, and the rest. But if there's one quarterback who I think is able to finally get into that conversation, it's Jeff Rosenblatt. Yep. He's been so close to being viewed as this S-tier quarterback for so long, but his inability to produce in the playoffs has caused everybody to, to doubt his abilities and not uh, maybe put him in that, in that same tier as Maher and Wyatt. But I think that if he can, I don't know, flip that switch mentally and you know get absolutely locked in in the playoffs, I think it might be the season that we say Jeff Rosenblatt is an S-tier quarterback in FBF. No, I agree, but I'm going to uh, add another team, a team that maybe you'll be surprised me to say that, but I think that KGP can challenge mm -hmm. those teams. KGP is a team like, even though they're they're 0-1 right now, that's a team that gets better as the season goes, and you know how they do in the playoffs. They're they're not a team that you can take lightly, and uh, if, I, if I look at it real quick, the roster must be pretty much the same uh, Guys returning, um, Ariel Lebrady joined the joined the team, so that's very very cool to see. But low rating it's, too. Yeah, it's uh, it was interesting. Yeah, so you 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 got different different guys. Jonathan Garfinkel, one of the best receivers, also a pure receivers yeah. in the in the league. Uh, Phil Cutler, he's that's a question mark, isn't it? He wasn't uh, there. One. But yes, yeah, yeah, he wasn't there. So interesting. Uh, not quite sure who threw for them, but they, yeah. Jonathan scored. Paris. Who's yeah. Not, uh... It's going to be tough, especially if you go against uh, uh, EZW, uh, Jeremy White uh, squad uh, to your first game without oh, yeah. your quarterback. But, I was uh, very impressed by the, the EZW defense. Yes. Is that something you want to talk about? If yes, go ahead. They're not, they're not a team that anybody is going to be looking at seriously in terms of contending because, you know, they came from... Uh, from tier uh, from Division B, they did not win Division B, but this squad is is good, man. Yes. Um, and Jeremy White has been improving consistent consistently, and these guys are defensive geniuses when it comes to uh, to to know like recognizing plays. Um, and obviously, Nathan Desjardins, in my opinion, one of the best defensive players in all of FPF. No doubt about that in my mind, and. You add all of these other uh, very talented, um, these other very talented uh, DBs. I think your defense is going to be really good, and Jerry Mike is always is going to find a way to score. It will be an adjustment, but they'll be good. No, definitely. I think that's a team that can be above 500 this season. But is is the those games against those top squads that are going to de determine if they're going to be able to co to compete, like to actually compete for a title? Because winning against KGP. Uh, without their quarterback, uh, doesn't say much. No, exactly. But still, like you said, very impressive uh, defensively. Getting three picks, uh, Alexandre Barros getting a pick six also, uh, and getting three uh, two points con two point convert is also very huge. As you move up in division, those converts, you know how they add up. And at the end of the yeah. game, if you lose by one, that that's the difference there because you. And the, the ability of uh, Jeremy White to go for two is very, very important because you know that Kevin's White going to go for two, Joe Myers is going to go for two, and the rest of the teams should yeah. go for two. Um, you have to go for two to beat them. Exactly. You have no choice. You, you, can't, you can't catch him with, uh, with the one points. It's just not going to be enough. Um, but yeah, tier one, once again, uh, very, uh, very interesting what's going to happen. Uh, you got a newish team, uh, the Dizod team, with uh, quarterback Zach Zergotis at uh, uh, as QB. That's what I've heard. Yeah. So, do you think is the is the right choice to go with him? 
No. No. <laughs> no, I think Jin Zelix is much better at this point. Um, he's got the experience. He's got the, the the high diff pedigree. He was extremely solid for Party Crashers um, Division A last season. Um, look, I know the arm talent with Zergiotis is out of this world. Yes. Uh, I think everybody's... You know, if you haven't seen him throw, like, just go look it up. It's crazy. But flag and just throwing a ball is different. I think Zergiotis will be a great quarterback in FPF if he sticks to it. But at this point, he's not able to read defenses and understand the concepts as well as Shinsley Alexi is able to at this point. But look, they're going to give him a chance. If things don't work out, you have a, a great backup option in the uh, engines but uh jack is gonna have a plethora of weapons uh, in that yeah. team if i if i look at it uh, darren wilshire Corey williams talk about jinsley alexi jordanson alexi who's also a, a very very good player who's keep improving every season yes He's, uh, he had an amazing season uh, in uh, division a with uh with party crashers i think he's gonna he's gonna keep keep uh Keep going strong uh, in that way. And you have uh, Rijan Giro also in the squad. Uh, just uh, an amazing athlete, uh, an amazing player. So yeah. it's a little bit like a party crashers ish without the. Uh, with, yeah. yeah, exactly. Without uh, without Fred, uh, Fred Dupuis. Because uh, we know that the fall season, guys that are really uh, involved in the football, uh, contact football, don't usually play the fall season just because they don't have the time. Of but uh, it's, it's 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 cool to see that in the fall season we have that many teams. Maybe not in yep. the higher divs, but the tier three and tier four are loaded. Coed two is loaded, so very very nice to see. And uh, I'm I'm very uh, very um, I look forward to, to this season, uh, this fall season, and also uh, to us talking about what what happened uh, during the during the week. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring in uh, some different 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 stuff to the podcast. We're gonna we're gonna try to bring some 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 different so, uh, subjects topics, and uh, hopefully get a little bit of uh, in- interviews going on. Personally, yep. I would uh, really like to interview players and get to know them, uh, get to know them, get to know their story. So that's where we're gonna work. Uh, we're gonna work uh, with that uh, this season. But if anyone is interested. Just let let us know. We'll be happy to to hear your story uh, about how you got into flag. Uh, uh, what what do you think about the game? Anything we uh, we always appreciate it. So um, yeah, Jerome, uh, that that wraps up uh, the the first episode uh, for us in uh, uh, fall twenty twenty four season of CTA. It was uh, it was a blast. And uh, next uh, next week we'll, we're going to be back with a little bit more uh, juice uh, to talk because first week it's. Pretty much just speculation. Yeah. But uh, it, it was fun, and uh, like I said, if you guys uh, got anything you want us to, to add, any feedback, feel free to uh, to approach us uh, or to text us uh, in uh, on Instagram or um, or Facebook. We'll be happy to take your uh, take your advice, take your uh, your suggestion. Of course. Uh, thank you, everybody, for for listening. Uh, thank you to Manu. You did a great job uh, as you always do. Um great. All right guys. Cool. Have a good have a good uh, week of games. Stay safe and have some fun. Put the place up.